TGC Requiem. We are here with Grixis Reanimator. This is match one. We're going to be on the play. Um, so this might be okay. It's certainly a little weak in terms of... Um, Certainly a little weak in terms of mana, but we do have the ability to island into Slay of Hand. Um, and we have a couple spells with Is It Charm that could do filtering. So we at the very least could be like Island, Slight of Hand. Uh, we get to look at two cards, ideally get a land, put one on the bottom. We draw a card for our next turn. So we've seen three cards at that point. Um, Worst case, we could then, is it charm to draw two, discard two, um, and we could end up potentially setting ourselves up really well in that regard with having the Gorio's Vengeance and the, um, you know, who knows, possibly we draw into like a Grizzle Brand to throw in the graveyard. I actually think I'm going to keep this. It is a little bit of a risky keep. I will definitely confirm that. Opponent's probably going to think we're on Storm with the slight, slight of Hand. Uh, so we do want to consider Grizzle Brand. So we, yeah, we definitely just want to put Grizzle Brand in hand. That plays into the potential of Is It Charming? Um, to set up a Gorya's Vengeance the following turn. So we're going to put Grizzlebrand into hand through the breach. He'll go on the bottom. No pass turn. Tron. So Tron is typically a pretty good matchup. Now this may be Eldrazi Tron, which I haven't really played against, so we'll have to see. But... I think we're just going to play a Scalding Tarn here and pass... And then on end step, end step we can, uh, is it charm? Right, black, red, yes. So we can, is it charm, discarding Grizzle Brand, playing the Gorya's Vengeance on our turn, attack, draw seven, and go from there. So again, we still just kind of look like Storm at this point. The thing about Tron is you basically, with Grizzle Brand, have the ability, they don't put enough pressure on you fast enough. Um, so this is probably Eldrazi Tron. Oh, so we could just counter this, but I think we want to save our second Is It Charm for countering, so we're just going to let this go. Go get a Blood Crypt. And again, we'll Is It Charm, discarding Grizzle Brand, and we'll see what else. All right, so now we actually have a little bit of a choice. I mean, we're definitely going to discard Grizzle Brand. We're not really close enough to Through the Breach, and we're probably too weak to that. So I think we actually are going to discard Grizzle Brand and Through the Breach. And the hope will be to reanimate um, Grizzle Brand this turn and then. We draw another land. All right, collective brutality. So the nice thing here is because we can reanimate Grizzle Brand, we're almost certainly going to draw a land. And then hopefully we'll be able to hold up Is It Charm to counter you know, like a car, and if that's what they draw.
So we're only going to gain two life here. We're still going to draw our seven. So I think we're just going to play Bloodstained Mire here. And then we're going to have to clean up, discard some cards. Uh, I think we're going to keep both Emrakuls as a hedge against them. Um, so like if they thought not see us, if they take, if we leave one Emrakul and they take an Emrakul, we're kind of dead in the water. But if we keep two Emrakuls, um, if they take Simeon Spirit Guide, we have Gorda's Vengeance. If they take Gorda's Vengeance, we can Simeon Spirit Guide into a Through the Breach. So we definitely want these cards. We want those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I guess the question is what's more important to us? Is it charm or faithless looting? And I think we're gonna actually pitch faithless looting here and that way we can keep another land. Um, Emrakul should just win the game next turn. Reality Smasher doesn't do anything to really threaten us. Uh, Relic is fine. Because again, we can through the breach here. So the plan will just be to through the breach at this point. They do have one mana up, so if we tried to say, is it charm to discard an Emrakul and then Gorio's Vengeance, the Emrakul, while it's on the stack, the opponent could sacrifice Relic at that point. So uh, this is just a clear through the breach situation. And the thing is, is they're not gonna be able to block this, so this is definitely lethal along with the fact that they have to sacrifice everything, so. All right, so 1-0 in game one, match one. So Relic is good to know. So this is one of those cards that you know, you probably want to play around with potentially having like a Quicksilver Amulet. Um, it would be nice to be able to blow it up, but you could also plan to Echoing Truth. I think Echoing Truth is also going to be pretty strong against, uh, potentially could be strong against some of their creatures. I do think Thought Seize is possibly good here. No reason for base Seiyu, no reason for Dispel. Fatal Push is not great in the matchup. Um, I think if we're looking at cards... These are the ones we're looking at, um, potentially. Now, when we look at what's going to be bad here, um, the opponent's probably going to have, along with Relic to Progenitus, they're probably going to have Surgical Extraction. That's pretty common for Eldrazi Tron. Uh, so I think what we want to do is a Charm could be okay against Surgical Extraction. 
I do think we probably want to cut like the faithless looting. I think we definitely want to cut at least one Gorio's Vengeance. It's possible we even want to cut two. Um, Liliana's Death's Majesty seems fine here. Still just going to ideally buy us some time with blocking. Uh, Collector Brutality is a charm. I think is a charm offers a you know more value in terms of being the counter spell. Collector Brutality, we're not really concerned about. Um, I think we at least want to pull one of these out. We definitely want through the breach, which means we want to keep all of our Simeon Spirit Guides in. I think I'm actually just going to pull another Faithless Looting here. And one more Gorio's Vengeance. And then in that case, as I look through, I, I don't know that Jace is super powerful here, so we're probably just going to pull one, especially if they're, um, you know, going to probably be hating on the graveyard pretty hard. And then, do you think we still want Echoing Truth? So maybe we do just pull this other Collective Brutality. It's questionable whether or not um, Bullion is going to be great here. Now on the play, I would be more apt to keep the Faithless looting the Gorgo's Vengeance is in, because we could even, you know, get ahead of a Relic or a Surgical Extraction. But again, there's just some real concern about um, Surgical Extraction and, and making sure you're in a position to counter it. Uh, I actually like this hand. I wish we had a little more filtering in terms of, um, like, Serum Visions or Sleight of Hand to try and hit our lands to get to Quicksilver Amulet. But as it is, uh, I think we're going to keep this. We kind of have all the pieces. We have two of two of our creatures and two of our cheat into plays. Uh, we also have our hate. Certainly we're at risk to uh, have Thought Not Seers or Running Thought Not Seers do some damage to us. But... Um, we want to draw land, so we're just going to play Dark Slick Shore and pass. Opponent's just setting up an expedition map turn. Wouldn't be surprised to see him go get a Eldrazi, uh, another Eldrazi temple. It'll be pretty telling if they go for a big land, what their plan is. Uh, yeah, Eldrazi temple makes sense. Expecting thought out now we got a reality smasher. So we're gonna be put on a clock now. So one thing we could do with multiple Grizzle Brands here, we can Echoing Truth the Reality Smasher. Um, so buy us an extra turn, and then we have to discard a card. If we do, we can put Grizzle Brand in the graveyard. That gives us access to Gorio's Vengeance. Um, so I think we're going to do that here. So it looks like we're going to get a Thought Not Seer. Oh, Chalice for two. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, at least we used our Echoing Truth when we did. Uh, I think we want to just plan for Quicksilver. So I'm going to just fetch, get a sideways land. I don't want to have uh, like a double Reality Smasher scenario. I don't know if that's technically feasible, but... Uh, 
Perfect. So we can get that Quicksilver Amulet down and then play Emra Cool next turn, assuming they don't have any sort of artifact destruction. Thought Nazi is not great because Emrakul would be phenomenal here. Maybe we'll get lucky and just draw another Emrakul. Chalice on two is another good way to fight this Gorio's Vengeance. Something to keep in mind for post boarding. So kind of the best thing we could do now, if we can use Grizzlebrand to draw into an Emrakul and through the Breach, Emrakul next turn. I guess we'd have to draw through the Breach and Emrakul now. So I actually am kind of okay with just drawing seven right now because if we can get uh, Emra Cool, that should be game over. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm. Well, yeah, because we could still leave Grizzlebrand back. And then, um, worst case, after we draw seven, we can hopefully still just attack, gain the life. If we hit another Grizzlebrand, just put it into play off Quicksilver Amulet. So. I think we draw seven here. Still have Simeon Spirit Guide to get to our four. Yeah, perfect. So we want Grizzlebrand in hand. We know they have a Reality Smasher, so they can attack for 
13, but we can block and ideally gain life on the, on the attack, which should keep us in range. Certainly a dismember could make that a little bit of a blowout. Gotta keep in mind that we cannot cast anything but these through the breaches right now. So we are going to through the breach, right? And we could actually splice Grizzlebrand, but we don't want to do that. Opponent's just going to concede at that point, so we're going to get the win. Um, I guess that makes sense. They wouldn't be able to block. I, I even, didn't even consider the fact that <laughs> the opponent only being at 13 allowed Amrakul to, to just get there. So, um, yeah, sometimes this is just fun to do. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily positioned super, super well in the meta right now. Uh, certainly it hasn't had many wins, but I think there's also a lot of people who just haven't really tried a version like this uh, which was showing some popularity. Um, they're starting to show some popularity prior to Carry Zev um, breaking entering combo. But anyway, if you enjoy, feel free to subscribe. On the left hand side, uh, we'll have a link to the next video in the league, and on the right, a link to Grixis Reanimator um, playlist. So hopefully you enjoyed.